Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the second question in the data structures module. So the question is maximum subarea. So let's first take a look at this question. So in this question, we're given an integer array called nums and our goal is to find the contiguous subarea containing at least one number which has the largest sum and then we have to return the, uh, that sum, okay? So what is a subarea? So a subarea is basically, it has to be a contiguous part of the area. So what that means is we could have something like negative two, one, negative three, but we cannot have something like negative two and negative three, right? Because they're not continuous. So we wanna find a subarea which has the largest values. So the, the only reason this question is a little bit complicated is the fact that we have negative numbers. So we do have to account for that. So let's actually just look or try to come up with a solution with this uh, using this exact, uh, exact same example over here. So over here I have the exact same array. So negative two, one, negative three, four, negative one, two, one, negative five, and four. So before actually going into how we're gonna find a solution, let's actually just break it down a bit, okay? So we're gonna keep track of a current sum. So this is gonna be the sum of the elements in the sub array that we're considering, right? So the sub array we're considering is negative two comma one, then our current sum is going to be, well, it's gonna be uh, one, sorry, negative one, my bad, right? So in this case, it's gonna start off at zero. Now, before actually going into that in more depth, uh, let's take an example. So let's say we have this array with negative two, and then after that, all of the numbers are positive. So one, two, three, all the way to positive infinity, for example. So let's take the sum of this entire area. So we're gonna have some value, right? So we're gonna get we're gonna get a value. But now let's take with the sum from one onwards. Obviously, this sum is greater than the original sum, including the negative two. And the reasoning is very simple. Uh, when you have a negative value, the number is going to get smaller when you add them. It's as simple as that, right? So the basic idea that we want over here is every time we get a negative value we're gonna kind of reset our current sum. In other words, we're gonna look for a new sub area. So continuing with the same logic, let's say we have negative two, and then we keep having negative numbers, negative one, negative eight, so on and so forth. So each time, so when you add all these together, right, you're gonna get a larger negative value than if you just take one of them, right? Let's say you only take negative two or only take negative one. So every time you have a negative value, we're gonna kind of reset the current sum to zero. In other words, what that's saying is that we're not extending our sub area. We're only taking the sub area as the element itself, right? So our sub area is not gonna be negative two comma negative one. It's only gonna be negative two first and then only negative one, right? Now keeping the same logic, over here it was first negative two, but then when we move on to one, we reset it. So now our sub area is one, but since one is positive, we actually extend this all the way until we can, right? So every time our current sum is zero, we reset it, to, uh, sorry, it's negative. We reset the value to zero. And the basic idea by resetting that value is that we're basically looking at a new sub -air. So now let's see what this actually looks like. Uh, so now we have negative two in the beginning. So negative two goes to our current sum. And what we're gonna do is we're also gonna keep track of the max sum. And this is pretty straightforward, which is the max sum is gonna be the value between the current max sum the largest value between the current max sum and the current sum. So in this case, let's say we start off with the value of negative infinity with the purpose of always taking the current sum in the beginning. So our maximum sum is now negative two. Cool. So now we go on to the value one. Now before that, the current sum is negative. So that means we don't want to extend our sub array. So we basically start a new sub array. So current sum becomes zero over here. So now we have one and now we add one to our current sum. So we have one. And now we take the maximum sum, which is gonna be the maximum between one and negative two. So our new max sum is one, that's it, right? So we keep going on with that logic. Now we do not reset the current sum, we go to negative three. Now the value over here is going to end up becoming negative two. So basically one comma negative three, so that contiguous sub array is actually smaller than the value we had earlier. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna reset this, right? So now this is going to end up becoming zero again. And obviously the max sum is not gonna change. So I'll try to go through this a little bit faster now. So now we have four. So four becomes our current sum and the maximum sum also becomes four. So now we're gonna extend the sub array to negative one as well. But now when we go to negative one, we get a current sum of three, right? Now three is smaller, but it's still positive. 
right? And uh, so in this case, the max sum doesn't change. So now we extend it again. So our sub error is mm. 4, comma, negative 1, comma, 2. So in this case, we're now going to get a positive value. So we're going to get 5. So now 5 is greater than 4. So that's our new max sum. So now since it's still positive, we extend it again. So now this becomes the length of it. So 1 is included. And the current sum becomes 6. And it also becomes our max sum. Perfect. So now we extend it again. So let's say we have negative 5 in our area as well. And remember, so far, the best one we found was this uh, kind of sub array. 4, negative 1, 2, 1, right? Um, so now we take negative 5, and the current sum ends up you know, falling down. And this has a value of uh, 1, right? So obviously, 6 is greater than 1, so it doesn't change. And now we extend it again, since the current sum is still positive. Now, if you're not, if you're confused, why are we taking the negative value? Well, the basic idea is that our current sum is still positive. So let's say there are greater values, and that's exactly what happened. Over here, we had a negative value of negative 1, right? But when we kept extending it, we had two positive values after that. And we did that because the current sum was still positive. So that's why we kept going on. But if it was negative, we would reset the array and get a new sub array by making the current sum 0. So over here, now we have 4. And this would actually end up becoming 5, but still our largest value was with 6. So in this case, we're going to return the maximum sum, which is 6. And just for the sake of showing you, that would be 4, negative 1, 2, 1. So we're going to end up returning the 6 over here. So now let's see what this looks like in code. Okay, so the code for this is pretty straightforward. Um, so we're going to start off by defining our current sum. And sorry, we're going to have our current sum and we're also going to have our max sum. Okay, so the current sum is going to start off with a value of 0. And for our max sum in the beginning, we want to get the first value as the max sum. So we're just going to make it negative infinity. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go in a for loop where we iterate through each of the numbers in nums. So now we're first going to add that number to our current sum. So current sum, and we're going to add the value of num. So now we need to update our max sum. So max sum is going to be the maximum between the current sum that we just found out and the previous max sum that we were holding, okay? And now what we're going to do is we need to reset the current sum if needed. So if the current sum is negative, or in other words, if it's less than zero, we're going to reset this value by making it equal to zero. And that should be it. So at the ending of this for loop, we're going to have the, uh, the answer stored inside of max sum. Oh, sorry, so that's going to be return max underscore sum and let's submit the solution. So the time complexity of this is gonna be big O of n, because well, we're iterating through the entire array once, um, so that's gonna take n, and the space complexity is gonna be constant space, because well, we're not actually using up any extra space. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys, and do let me know if you have any questions.